Next, I wanted to work on the legs. I had some short 8x8 beams that I wanted to mill down for this, which luckily just barely fit under the gantry. I got it squared up and clamped down to the table. There's a fairly big split on the top side of this one, so the 5 inches I decided to keep were toward the bottom side. In V-Carve, I imported the leg from SketchUp. I gave all the corners dog bone fillets that matched my tool width, which would let the square tenon slide in. I decided I would keep all the tenons actual size and slightly oversize the mortises with a pocket allowance of negative two one hundredths, which seemed the best fit with my test pieces. I used the same method I did for the tabletop pieces, where I drilled holes in the top side and then cut the same matching holes in the machine bed. Dowels tapped into the machine bed would then orient the leg when it was flipped upside down, letting me run the same tool path and cut the rest of the way through the five inch leg. got a new helper out in the shop. This guy was rescued on the farm and now thinks he's Drake number two. He definitely tests Drake's patience. I got the rest of the legs finished and also cut out the longer runner. I'd used most of the logs and beams for the tabletop by this point and wasn't going to have enough to do the arch pieces. I thought the next best thing would be to laminate three 2x12s together. After surfacing each board and gluing them together, I started cutting out the arches. I'm still a newbie, but I see VCarve as mostly a 2D cutting program that you can kind of trick into cutting 3D shapes by setting different cut depths. After importing the arches from SketchUp, I first set a slightly oversized pocket on the tenon ends and set the cut depth to one inch. Then I profiled the whole shape to a cut depth of two and a half inches, which is as deep as the router bit will go. Using the double-sided feature, I switched to the underside and ran the same process, cutting the rest of the way through the five inch beam and leaving the tenon ends on the arches. I learned that it's better to place the dowel locations offset around the workpiece, so there's no chance of flipping the piece the wrong direction and having it still fit over the dowels. If the holes were in a square pattern, the piece could fit back on even if it was oriented in a different direction if you weren't careful. If they're offset, it can only go back on the correct way. I had a lot of sanding ahead of me. I got to work. The first thing to glue up were the ends. Some of the joints slid together like butter. Others took a little bit more persuasion. But all in all, I was really happy with how everything fit.
So it was about this time in the project that I started realizing I was getting a little anxious about putting the table in the barn as a workbench. I had spent so much time on it and put so much work into it, I just knew I wasn't going to be able to use and abuse it as a workbench should be. I just knew the first time I walked into the barn and saw the owl up in the rafters had taken a big dump on it, it would put me over the top and would have me checking if he was on the endangered species list or not. I just knew that all the oil, paint, and chemical spills that would surely happen on this table would eat away at my frail heart. <sighs> so I started talking to Kelly about swapping it out for the dining room table. Now hear me out, babe. We've kind of been wanting to replace the slightly broken secondhand one we had anyways, and this will be such a good conversation piece for when we have guests over for dinner, and, and your mom, your mom will be so happy with how many people we can fit around this table when she's here visiting and hosting Irish dinner night for the whole neighborhood. Right? Much to my surprise, Kelly was on board right away. I was now building a dining room table. I would definitely have done some things differently if I knew this from the beginning. But what are you going to do? It's too late to go changing things now. After running a surfacing pass over the tabletop, I mixed some two-part epoxy, dyed it black, and filled in all the holes and cracks. I ended up just about covering the whole tabletop by the time I had them all filled. I gave it five days to dry, keeping the heat on in the room during this time. I think it said it only needed a couple days, but I got busy on the farm that week and thought the extra dry time couldn't hurt. I pulled the tape off around the edges, which I used to keep the epoxy on top. I found a small corner in the back that I was able to zero my z-axis on and ran another surface in paths with a depth of just two one hundredths of an inch. This wasn't quite enough. I wanted the epoxy just in the recesses, so I re-zeroed and ran it again, which ended up being just right. And I couldn't resist a quick sanding to finish the tabletop off. The dining room tabletop off, 